What's going on, people? I'm back again for part two of how to make a photo book. And in this episode, I'm actually going to break down how to sell a photo book. So if you missed the first video, I'll leave a link in the description below. But for everyone else, let's get into it. All right, quick disclaimer. There's probably a million different ways that you could go about doing this, but I'm just gonna share four ways that helped me sell out of over 200 copies of my first photo book. And I guarantee if you watch to the end of this video, one, if not all four things that I'm gonna share will help you when it comes to selling your first photo book. It's been one year since the launch of my first photo book, and that's given me some time to reflect on what worked really well and maybe some things that didn't work as good as they should have. But one thing's for sure, hosting a launch event for your book is a must. So because this was a collaborative photo book project, we kind of got a bit of a cheat code because myself and New York-based photographer Sen Floyd, we got to tap into each other's audiences, which is ultimately what led us to make the decision to host the book launch event in both New York and Toronto. Now I know that sounds like a lot, so let me explain how we did this. When it came to launching our photo book, we decided that a photo exhibit would be the best option for us, and for a few different reasons. One, you could showcase your photos at a larger scale, which makes for bigger impact. Two, a gallery exhibit is an elevated experience where you actually get to interact with your audience in person versus online. Three, you can sell your photo book directly to your consumer at that spot, as well as any other things like prints or accessories. Four, you can generate online buzz with social media content that's being shared during the event, as well as capturing additional content to share after the event. Okay, so a few things to consider when planning a photo book launch event would be the venue, the location, the date, time, the length of the show, uh, if you're doing any installation, so printing and framing, definitely your budget, that's a huge one, um, if you're going to sell your book on site, you're going to want to think about bringing your own POS system in order to accept debit, uh, credit, cash. That might mean you need change, which actually brings me to the point of who's staffing this. Are you getting volunteers, friends and family, or is the venue supplying people to help you sell your product? Uh, last but not least, once you put all of this together, there may be an opportunity for sponsorship. And sponsorship is something that can help with your costs, but also elevate the experience for everyone in attendance. Now, in our case, we got sponsorship in Toronto, but New York, unfortunately, after knocking on a lot of doors, sending a lot of emails and hitting up our contacts, we weren't able to secure any sponsorship for the New York show. And I actually want to play a quick clip from a conversation I had with Sen last time I was in New York when we were just rapping about this project together. To put a show together of that magnitude in both Toronto and mm -hmm. New York, um, it cost a lot. It cost a lot of money. And we really took a huge leap of faith saying we're going to invest in ourselves, use this as an opportunity to like showcase our work, mm -hmm. have like a project actually exist and live in the world. The Toronto show did really well. So I was right. a little nervous when it came to New York and being able to have like two, three hundred people show up. Right. And then actually once I actually buy the book. Yeah. But I took the leap of faith. And one thing that made it easier to trust in that process was our marketing plan. In order to give yourself the best chance at selling the most amount of photo books, you're going to want to create a marketing plan. Now that plan doesn't have to be anything crazy, but it should provide you with as many public facing opportunities as possible. Now, in order to do that properly, you're gonna to need to create a timeline. And that timeline should be pretty realistic. Similar to like when your favorite artist releases an album, well, they've got a rollout plan that leads up to that release date. So for us, we gave ourselves one month of promotion for each show with multiple touch points along the way. For example, when we announced the Toronto show, it started on June 6th, but the event wasn't happening until July 7th. And when we announced the New York show, it was on July 12th, but the show didn't actually happen until a month later in August 11th. So leading up to the Toronto show between June 6th and July 7th, we shared six main pieces of content on Instagram. The first one being an announcement and a ticket link. On June 7th, we dropped an unboxing video of the photo books as well as a collaboration post with a glimpse of a few of the pages. 
On June 17th, we did a teaser with a flipbook video and an additional pre-order link to buy the book in advance. And on June 24th, we did a sneak peek of one of the nine images that would be featured at the Toronto Gallery. Following that, on June 26th, I shared nine photos that actually didn't make the book, but I still loved, and we included another pre-order link. And during this time, we stayed super consistent on our IG stories, keeping people up to date on how many RSVPs we had, even to the point of selling out twice. Because of this, we updated our link, added more tickets, and the show got extended. The Toronto show was up for three weeks, so we continued to promote the exhibit in a bunch of different ways. I hosted gallery tours for small groups who wanted a more intimate viewing experience where they could ask questions. Plus I had a closing day party that was open to the public for anyone who wasn't able to make the grand opening. Now over the course of the two months leading up to both shows, we did as many pre-orders as possible. And that was a very important part of our marketing plan and strategy. And I feel like we should jump into that next. Okay, so pre-orders. I highly recommend offering a pre-order option for anyone who's self-publishing their first photo book, and I'll tell you why. Pre-orders are a great way to gauge interest in your book and provide you with some upfront cash to help you with production costs. It also allows you to make an educated guess on how many copies you might need to order in total. In our case, we were worried that not very many people would really care to buy a self-published photo book from two virtually unknown photographers. So we played it super safe and we ordered just over 100 books. Now, the crazy thing is, as soon as we hit that first Toronto show, we sold out of, I think, 120 books and we had to reorder immediately to make enough books in time for our New York show. So offering pre-orders helped us out in a few different ways. Obviously locking in RSVPs for the event because the pre-orders were only available for pickup at the event. It gave a customer experience for anyone that actually ordered online and then met us in person. You don't get to do that with every product or anything that you buy online. So overall, it was an incredible experience for both the customer and us as the artist. Okay, so this is one area that a lot of us forget to think about. And it's because we get so wrapped up in the product itself, or maybe the launch of the product, that we never make plans for what happens after the launch. You know, a lot of times the project could be amazing at the beginning, but then the hype dies down and you're left with nothing. So obviously the book launch event is very important, but extending the life of your photo book is equally as important. It can open new doors, create more sales, gain exposure to new audiences, and ultimately it allows other people to experience part of your journey. Okay, so there are a few things that you could do in order to extend the life of your project. There's articles, blog posts, interviews, podcasts. They're all great ways to keep your photo book top of mind while introducing your product to a new audience. In our case, we didn't really have a budget for a PR firm, so we reached out to everyone in our network to see what was possible. And luckily, we locked in an artist talk at Soho House Toronto, Plus we did an in-store display and book signing at Livestock, which is a really cool sneaker spot also in Toronto. And they ended up carrying uh, copies of our book. We also ended up in the Annex Hotel, which is a really unique boutique hotel in Toronto that actually purchased copies for all the rooms in their hotel. We also locked in an interview and a multi-page article with a Canadian men's lifestyle magazine entitled Sharp. So by following our marketing plan and extending the life of our project, we were able to have the same difference book make noise both online and in person for over six months. This helped us sell over 200 plus copies of our book, grow our individual audiences, collaborate as artists and business partners. Plus, most importantly, we got to share our work with the world. Okay, so if you made it this far in the video, there's a good chance some of you are saying there's no way I'm gonna do that much work just to sell 200 books. And I get it, it is a lot of work, and I know that not everyone's gonna to wanna to do that. But once again, this is just one of a million ways that you could probably launch your photo book and sell it. So I'm just sharing my creative process in the hopes that maybe it helps you if you do launch a book or you do wanna to decide to sell it. And who knows, maybe you can build on top of what I've done and make it even better. So at the end of the day, I enjoy myself, I hope you guys did too, and good luck on your next project.